interesting to observe. But uh, I will speak about a longitudinal uh, temporal, uh, um, from a, a, longitud a longitudinal temporal um, approach, and also uh, engaging three factories that I managed to at least partially research in the course of the ERC project. So we have different approach, again, tobacco, uh, factory is the, the, the area which, which is um, the basis of the research. And uh, maybe it, it's more useful for me just to read what I wrote. Uh, I will be more clear in that way. Um, and of course, I'm looking forward to your comments. And um, I hope you will find it clear enough. Um, so. Well, my paper applies a transnational, comparative and long longitudinal approach to the tobacco workers of three um, of the eight tobacco factories located in the northeastern Adriatic region in the 20th century. The tobacco factories in Ljubljana, Klagenfurt and Drovin were established in the 19th century and as such were subordinated to the Austrian tobacco monopoly in Vienna, which at the turn of the 20th century uh, altogether controlled 30 enterprises of the tobacco industry in the Habsburg, Austria. Even though the, they initially belonged to the same state, they also exhibited profoundly different progress established on diverse social political foundations. Also, manifold shifts in national and cultural setting influenced substantial divergence of their de de development course. The factories have been observed over a longer spectrum of time, defined by alternating forms of capitalism and socialism in the long 20th century. It brings into focus periods after bo both world wars and disintegration of Yugoslavia, which all significantly affected possibilities of work in the observed regions. The longitudinal views testifies to the fact that not only economic alternation, but also changing political frameworks fundamentally affected the quality of life and work in the region. The research favors the international approach that tends to explain social relations in extended scope of observation, taking into account gender, class, ethnicity, national affiliation, age, and physical disability or ability. In rethinking the, the long-term position of tobacco workers in Klagenfurt, Ljubljana, and Rovin, it is possible to add several additional social factors to better define workers' social position, which are related to uh, the working collective, to the factory with its internal rules, rules and norms, to the framework of unions, and to the state as a carrier of social and political system. These may point to the categories of ideology, citizenship, marital status, educational degree, and social position within the factory. The three factories offer convincing empirical, empirical evidence with clearly, which clearly exhibits mutable social hierarchies in relation to tobacco workers, even more so when a long-term perspective is employed. The social meaning of gender appears to be mutable as well, but only in nuances as women workers seems to have been perceived secondary to their male colleagues all through the observed period. In the very start of the tobacco production, work tasks and job positions in the tobacco factories were deeply gendered, what reflected in the three, in the, in the three observed factories as well. Initially, women workers executed non-qualified or semi-qualified tasks only. In the interwar, the tobacco administration gradually underwent feminization. Following the Second World War, also the field of management also opened, opened up for women. 
Gradually, female workers even achieved qualified position in traditionally male work tasks, such as production line manager. The, this phenomen, the phenomenon was even more evident in Ljubljana than in any other Yugoslav factory, reflecting uneven courses towards women's social equivalence within, within the Yugoslav state. Biographical, pers biographical perspectives show that even in a social con context which officially promoted gender equality, the quality of social network seemed to be crucial, of crucial importance for women workers, defined by tenacious traditional outlooks on gender. In times of changing regimes, the concept of loyalty to the state has greatly affected numerous fields of civil life. This is also evident for the tobacco processing field, which has been monopolized by the state. In this sense, it is particularly indicative to observe state-positioned members of the tobacco administration, it as semi or qualified white-collar workers. After World War II, the employment of the administrative staff in the observed tobacco factories was predicted on ethnic origin or on workers' support of nationalist politics. For in Klagenfurt, no greater changes in the composition of white-collar uh, white workers happened, given a relative institutional and national continuity. On the other hand, in Ljubljana, the pro-Habsburg or German tobacco administration was su supplemented with a Slovene or pro-Yugoslav one. Similarly, German and Hungarian tobacco officials were replaced with Italian ones in Rovin. In times of overturn and prolonged post-war socio-economic socio crisis, also ordinary, mostly female workers, underwent a selection process. The tobacco factory Ravin is reported to have favored hiring Italian over Slavic workers once it became part of the Italian state monopoly. However, the position of tobacco workers clearly manifests the need to introduce the aspect of political or ideological identification, which at times, which was at times even more important than the ethnic origin. Namely, workers in Ravin were reported to more likely to be employed if they exhibited pro-fascist adherence, regardless of their non-Italian origin. Although all workers in the Italian, although all workers in the Italian tobacco industry had to be fluent in Italian, which was common in Istria anyway. In Ljubljana, no major changes in, in the workers' ethnic composition was, were reported in the interwar years. However, given the strictly anti-Bolshevik state politics, socialists and communists were considered as the threatening other. In Klagenfurt, whose workforce consisted of German and Slovene-speaking Austrians, nationally conscious Slovenes were discriminated. Although in the post-war Carinthia, ethnic factors seem to be crucial, also the ideological aspect bears mentioning. The well-developed social, social democratic movement in Klagenfurt faced great difficulties when Engelbert Dolfus, a clerical fascist politician, was appointed as the Chancellor of Austria between 32 and 34. Socialist and communist worldviews became became even more frequent targets of persecution with the Anschluss in 38. These structural changes affected the workforce in the tobacco factory as well. After World War II, the political situation took over when the socialist regime was introduced in the predominantly Slavic Yugoslavian state. Italian tobacco workers left the noun Yugoslav Rovin for Italy en masse. Many Istrian tabakine or tabakaine were indeed reported to be proponents of an Italian Istria at the war's end. Once in Italy, they often found jobs in other plants of the Italian tobacco industry, chiefly in Torino, Venezia, Rovereto, Florence, and Lucca. Massive departures of tabakine were reported to have had a negative effect on the quality of work in the tobacco factory Rovin since experienced workers 
including many su supervisors, maestre, had left. The, left, the lack of, of tobacco workforce in, the vin, in Rvin was eventually replaced by inland workers and immigrants from other parts of Yugoslavia. Unfortunately, the Klagenfurt factory was bombed and destroyed in an air raid in 1944 and never revitalized. With this abrupt end, the tobacco factory in Klagenfurt, as the oldest of all the three discussed plants, joined the fate of quite a few tobacco factories in the region, like the ones in Pula, Bologna, Reca, Rijeka, Sen, which all failed to recover their production in the post-war economic plans. In Yugoslavia, participation in the resistant movement brought about an, an exempt social position and possibility for upward mobility, affecting the working collective of the tobacco workforce also in, in Rovin and Ljubljana. Archival records in Ljubljana demonstrate the tendency to achieve various privileges in the factory and various social benefits, such as better work position, promotion, housing, year leave, pension, loans, and etc. Such a pattern lingered on until 1980s, after Tito's death, when the tobacco factory politics gradually, gradually took over more capitalist nuances. Only scarce data is available about the turbulent events in the 90s, marked by, by the resurrection of nationalist agendas. It remains an open question if tobacco workers from other republics were discriminated against after the dissolution of Yugoslavia. Similarly, we have no data so far on the share of refugees in the of the Yugoslav wars, neither in the tobacco factory of Ljubljana nor that of Rovin. Besides ethnic and political identifiers, generations, age, and health status also reflected the social hierarchies in the tobacco industry and affected their employment politics. The three characteristics are not only biological concepts, but categories that reflect turn, turns in social and historical components, whose rhythms point less to the sudden political shifts and more to the gradual modification of, of social norms. Despite its internal diversity, the members of a certain generation will to, uh, will to some extent share values identities and collect collective experiences just such as war, epidemics, crisis, cataclysms, legal options, etc. Sources suggest that tobacco workers were often perceived along generational lines by the management and also about among themselves. Working age has been understood and evaluated in different ways over different periods but there is a constant regarding the most numerous age group of female workers. These were women of childbearing age from 20 to 40, who accounted for about two thirds of female workers throughout the observed period. Due to low wages, younger workers of both sexes have, uh, to, uh, seem to have been hired on the most during, uh, on the most during um, economic crisis. Archival material in Ljubljana clearly shows that from 1920 to, 30, uh, to, to 35, factory management introduced the systematic recruitment of temporary volunteers, young men between the ages of 15 and 24, who worked for a third or a quarter of a day laborer's wage. Since 32, so this is the, the, the time of uh, depression, employment of young single women workers who received lower, lower wages than already employed women was quite common. This confirms the practice of the tobacco management who in times of crisis hired lesser paid young and single workers as they would not present additional costs for family allowances absences due uh, of a child's in illness, etc. A, ver a, va a, a variable chronological boundary was also applied to old, for old age. 
1877, the Austrian monopoly introduced internal laws that prevented employment in the factory if workers were considered as being too old. This rule also contained a clear gender-based difference, as for females the boundary was at the age of 35, while for the males at the age of 40. After First World War, tobacco workers in Ljubljana over the age of 35 and 40 respective, respectively could only be employed on a limited time basis if they were first-time hires. It bears emphasis that only permanent workers were entitled to a pension and, a, and other social benefits, and that the tobacco factory management obviously maneuvered with worker statuses to lower the salary costs. In addition, many older and or disabled workers re were retired after World War I, uh, so as not to become a social burden for the factory. Some of them were younger than 30. Retired workers were given the colloquial term almswomen, miloscinarke, hinting at the fact that their pension, pensions were below the survival minimum. Moreover, worker, work registers show that retired workers were occasionally, occasionally rehired for a substantially lower daily salary. These facts elucidate on the interwar Yugoslav state as an employer and the head of the tobacco factory monopoly in a very unflattering light. Compared to the interwar times, the attitude towards disabled elderly workers and pensioners in, this, in socialist Yugoslavia changed considerably on a financial, social, but also on a symbolic level. Directly after World War II, there was a severe need for physically fit workers to, to rebuild the war-torn country and strengthen heavy industry. Consequently, many health-compromised workers were appointed to the tobacco factory, now considered light industry. The socially, the socially endangered elderly, disabled, and sick seem to be included in the tobacco factory's domain with more respect, social privileges, and financial benefits that, than ever before. We have no access to data to reconstruct the trends of social welfare in the tobacco factory from 1919s onward. Studies on other fields of women's work report on the deterioration of workers' social rights in general, but also bear witness to the lowering of their symbolic capital. Although the paper brings about a simplified image, it enables certain observation, observations by using the comparative method, stretching across various generation, uh, geopolitical spaces and longer tem temporal spectrum. The analysis of each of the observed factories elucidates many local and national specifics, yet they also exhibit profoundly transnational and global patterns. The, the implementation of intersectional approach seems quite convincing here. In reconstructing the tobacco of work, workers' pasts, past, it becomes clear how numerous social aspects simultaneously delineate the worker's mutable position over time and space. Social hierarchies within the microcosmos of tobacco factories resonate with aspects of ethnicity and ideology in particular, whereas facets uh, such as gender, generation, generation and health condition also play an important role. When approached from the perspective from below, the tobacco proletariat is also represented through the lens of their inner heterogeneity and multivocality. The biographical perspective, in particular, highlights the meaning of an individual's own agency, psychological features such as persistence, ambition, sociability, and the quality of their social network as vitally important in bettering one's position at work. It presents an important historiographical concept which balances the findings that appear from a top-down perspective. Thank you for your attention.